So there's small storage areas which are built into the processor and which are volatile memory. So in the case of Intel x86-64, it has 16 general purpose registers, and then it's going to have the instruction pointer, which points at the next assembly instruction, which should execute. Of these 16 quote unquote general purpose registers, two of them are not that general. We'll talk about that in a bit. So when you have 32-bit systems, you didn't have 16, you actually only had eight plus the instruction pointer. And when they expanded it to 64-bit, they upped the number of general purpose registers to allow compilers to have more registers in which to juggle values. 32-bit systems, the registers are 32-bit wide, 64-bit, they're 64 bits wide. So I want to talk briefly about the evolution of the register. And to do that, I have to actually start back at the Intel 8-bit 80 08 rather than an x86 processor. So this in the beginning had an A register and it was only 8 bits wide. The reason I need to mention that is because when they then moved to the 16 bit 8086 architecture, then you had AX which stood for A extended. So you had AX 16 bit wide extended over the previous A register in the 80 out 0, 08, and you still could access that AX register one byte at a time with the A low or the A high. When they then further extended that to the 32-bit 8386, you had extended AX or extended A extended, and in the 32-bit architecture, you could have 32 bits at a time in EAX, or you could still access the 16-bit register AX or the A high or A low. The assembly instructions could still access these sub-registers. And when AMD did their 64-bit extensions in the Opteron, or later on in the Intel Pentium 4, they had RAX was the extended 64-bit version of EAX. But they also introduced a new naming scheme so RAX could also be called R0, and this is going to lead to the 16 registers being R0 through R15. So RAX, well, you could think of it like R stands for really wide AX, or you can just think of it like register AX, register zero. Furthermore, this new naming scheme introduced the subvalues instead of calling the old register EAX, uh, they could call it R0 D word size because remember Intel called a four byte value a double word or a 16 bit value a word or a eight bit value a byte. So they introduced this naming scheme. It's going to end up being a consistent naming scheme across all of these 16 general purpose registers. So R0 through R15 for the 64 bit version, R0 through R15 D for the double word and the word and the byte. So these are the general purpose registers that we have in x86-64. Let's zoom in on them. So in my diagram, the blue color is going to be the 64-bit version, the green, the 32-bit version, and the yellow, the 16-bit version. And even though I list you know, the 16-bit yellow color for here, it's really just saying in the original 16-bit architecture, you had AX and you had A low and you had A high. And like I mentioned, there was the R0, R1, R2, R3 naming convention and the word and byte version of that. But the ordering of the original uh, x86 had sort of uh, alphabetically named registers. So AX, BX, CX, DX, but it turns out that ABCD is not 0, 1, 2, 3 for uh, historical reasons and instruction encoding reasons that we're not gonna get into here. So, what it really comes down to though is that these, these names, RAX or R0, these are mnemonics for the particular register and it actually ends up being uh, up to the particular disassembler for whether it's going to call a register RAX or whether it's gonna call it R0. And most of the time, because it's easier for folks who you know knew previous architectures to know the ABCD, uh, most of the time disassemblers will name these alphabetical registers in their alphabetical form. So you won't actually see R0, R0D, et cetera, used that much in disassemblers. So these are the, the first four values of registers. Then we have the next four. These are the not quite generic, generic general purpose registers, RSP, used for stack pointer, RBP, used for base frame of a stack pointer. We'll talk about it in a little bit. RSI for string operations, the source index, RDI for string operations, the destination index. But again, they're general purpose and the compiler can really use them 
any way that it wants. These are just sort of you know naming conventions that have to do with usage conventions. Now the thing I would point out here is that RSP is an extended version of ESP, is an extended version of SP, which existed back in the 16-bit world, but there wasn't actually a way to access just the least significant byte of SP. That was something that AMD introduced when they did their 16-bit extensions, and they did that again so that they could have a consisting naming convention, and when we get into the extra registers that they added, uh, then they want to be able to access, you know, byte, 2-byte, 4-byte, 8-byte versions of these registers. So here's that uh, instruction pointer register. It was originally instruction pointer in 16-bit, extended instruction pointer, and really extended instruction pointer in 64-bit. But then now we see these extra general purpose registers which were introduced in the 64-bit extension. So if this was R0 through R7 down there, then we have R8 through R15 over here. And like I said, they want to have a consistent naming view, and so they have R8 byte, R8 word, R8 double word, and R8 all the way down through the 64-bit, uh, sorry, through the R15 as well. So here we go, got the general versions of R8 through R15.